So guys, before we get started, don't forget we do have that amazing discount code, thanks to Tier Zero Games, going on right now. And all you have to do is put in ZW Games five to get five percent discount on your total order at tierzerogames.com. The links will be in the description below. What's a YouTube day here from Zephyr Games? Bringing you um, pretty much Rob's Orcus deck. I've kind of added a little bit and, and changed around with it, and we worked on it a little bit together. But this is a budget Orcus deck. Now, I say budget quite loosely in the term that um, the whole main deck is very, very cheap and easy to pick up. You can get some, like, to be honest, if you've got good friends, they can probably give you half this stuff for free if they open enough boxes of um, Soul Fusion. Now, the only card that's really going to cost you is this guy here. Now, this is Dean Grusu, the Orcus of the Evening Star. This is the brand new card um, that came out in um, Dark Neostorm. Now, as an ultra, it shouldn't actually be that high, but from some of the openings we've been seeing, um, it's been going at about one a case. Now, if that is the case, um, this will no longer be a um, budget profile, but at the time of recording this, after sneak peek, these were sitting at 20 to 25 each. So, the maximum you're going to be putting in is 50 quid to the extra day. You can cut him down to one if you want to as well to keep it even more on budget. But other than that, we haven't exactly splurged huge amounts of money on any other part of the deck at all. These are basically pulls and trades. Um, if his price does rocket because of the low short uh, or the short printage, then of course it is no longer a budget build. But as of right now, um, containing two of him, the extra is about 50 to 60 quid and the main is about 10 quid if you've got good friends out there. I'll take you through the profile, I'll go through the prices as we go uh, and kind of show you what you can use as alternatives if you wish, but this is still a very, very cheap version of the deck that can cause a lot of issues. So without further ado, let's take you through the profile. So we start off with, of course, triple harp horror, uh, triple skeleton, and triple bombard. Now, of course, these are your main orcus cards that you want to be getting into the graveyard to use and abuse their additional effects. To help support them, we've got triple world legacy wand, this has a lot of ways of getting into the graveyard, so do not worry about that. And its banished effect is also very, very good. Double Orcus Nightmare, again, very, very good at two uh, in the budget version. If you want to, you can start cu cutting some of these down and working on the ratios to put, like, Call by the Graves in, to put more hand traps in, depending on which way you want to go. This is basically just a direct Orcus route um, to take you through into as many combos as you possibly can to either lock out your opponent with Fog Blades and the new Orcus Trap. And finish them off with uh, Bardish and, of course, Dingrisu. Uh, or if you go for a more, you know, expensive version, you're putting Dangers in here as well. We've then got Triple Phantom Knights of Silent Boots for the free special summon. And then you get them into the grave, you get the Fog Blade off it as well. Um, and that's kind of what you ideally want to be doing. Is you want to set a Fog Blade or a um, Brigadine off of your Rusty and then banish this for a Fog Blade. Um, and the Fog Blade is going to be so annoying towards your opponent. It really, really helps. The budget danger engine of two Mothman. You can put this at three if you want, but at two, because you're only playing the one danger card, can be very, very good to get these guys in the grave, give you a free level four on board with an additional draw. Or, of course, if he goes in the graveyard, you're discarding one of these guys anyway and then getting a draw off of that, so you're helping to extend your board. Uh, the one Dark Griffin, because it is at one, and the one Armageddon Knight, again, because it is only at one. Incredibly powerful cards in this deck. You um, normal summon your Armageddon Knight, send your Harp Horror, banish the Harp Horror, special summon, um, another one straight away you go into your Galatea and that's where things start getting messy for your opponent. Finishing off the monsters, you've got Triple Ash Blossoms. Now these can either be um, Ghost Ogres, Bells, anything you want to put in here. Um, or these can be Called by the Graves as well. So in this build, I took Called by the Graves out and put them into the side. It's not that I'm not playing them. It's just purely when I was building this deck and, and alongside Rob, I kind of decided that Called by the Graves are only good if I've gone first or to help me defend going second. Whereas Ash Blossom can be used whether I've gone first, uh, if my opponent goes first or not. So it, it just gives me a little bit more consistent for versatility. Um, whereas Call by the Grace can come in and decide that, or you can main them if you want to cut some of these down as well. This deck is very, very um, optional and it's just to give you a base skeleton to build off of. So if you've got like a 100 quid somewhere and you want to get into a new deck that's going to cause issues for your opponent and be very very strong this is probably the best deck to go to because it's only going to get stronger as time goes on for now um, especially with the national season and european season coming up right now or the tail end of it because we've already had a ban list so unless an emergency ban list comes into place because of um mystic mine which even then 
might not cause as big of an issue as some people do think it is of course a very very annoying card but we'll, we'll come to that when we have a discussion of, over Mystic Mine um, but unless we have an emergency ban list this is everything we're going to get right up until um, Euros uh, so this is probably going to be one of the stronger decks out there next up of course we've got Double Allure Donis if you want to you can put it up to free and then we play a lot of uh, one-off spells so one reasoning because in this deck you run um, sevens I think this is an 8 as well. The 1 is an 8, 2, 4, 6, 8. Yes, yeah, so you've got an 8 in the Wand, you've got a 1 in the Bombard, you've got 3 in the Skeleton, 4 in the Harp, and Armageddon Knight, Dark Breath, uh, Mothman. You've got 3 in the Boots, and a 7 in the Nightmare. Um, so you've got a fairly decent range of levels, and of course, Reasoning can bring them out uh, to give you that additional summon. Your 1 Hornet Drones. Of course, Hornet Drone is very, very important because you go into Kagari, um, and then Kagari brings this back. Then you play the Hornet Drones. Um, it is only at one. If you want to make it more consistent, you put in more of a Sky Striker engine. But the whole idea is you go straight into a Link 2 off of that. Um, or, of course, you can start boosting your plays up, giving you a sneak peek of the extra into the Galatea. And then you can go into, ideally, you want to be getting into your Dingarisu as well. So, Drones is very, very important in the deck. One Monster Reborn can be any kind of um, revival from the graveyard. Monster Reborn is obviously the best and most versatile. But then, if you wanted to, you could bring in the Living Fossil. Uh, and you could also bring in the World Legacy, World Legacy Succession as well. One Road if you're Dark Greffa and your Armageddon Knight. One Foolish Burial um, because you want as many of your Orcus in the graveyard as possible and then you can shuffle them all back in as well. One Orchestrated Return, you can search it, or well, you can search it technically by setting it. Um, you can only activate it once per turn and one is more than enough. Card Destruction, if you open up a hand of Orcus, you can just ditch them all into the grave, draw five new cards and then you can start boosting effects off in the graveyard. One Mask Change 2, this can be bumped up to 2, this is a very very nice spicy tech, purely because if you get a, um, if you get Dingrisu on board with a Dark Claw, as long as this has got material, it can protect your Dark Claw. So not only have you got like Fog Blade locking your opponent out, you've got a Dark Claw locking your opponent out, discarding cards to the graveyard isn't the end of the world because you want some of your cards in the graveyard, even more so if it's a Mothman during your opponent's turn, you get to ditch one, draw one, um, which can be very very helpful as well. You can bump it up if you want to. Marsh change into Dark Lord is probably one of the most powerful, you know, fusion monsters um, in the game. If his attack was any bigger, it, it would cause hell of a lot more issues. One Babel, one one for one, and one um, Iron Salts. Now Iron Salts could easily be cut if you want to. It's just a nice card to have um, going second. If you've opened up like your new counter trap, purely because if you've got your Babel, you've got you've already gone through the orchestrated return, or you want something to hit your opponent. This is just a constant foolish burial during your post turn, and then with Babel you're doing quick play effects, um, so it's very, very useful. Then for the traps, you've got two Fog Blades, the one um, Brigadine, and the one of the brand new card, Orcus Crescendo. Um, oh, there we go. You can bump Crescendo up if you want to, to two, um, but the way this is kind of operated to work is you go first, um, during your opponent's turn, or during your turn, you get into Galatea, play the Babel. Then, during your opponent's turn, you set the Crescendo. You've already got a lock out there. You should have, by the time, if you've opened up the combo well enough, you should also have a Fog Blade set along with a Rusty Bardish. The ability to bring out your Dingrisu um, using one of its quick play effects of Heart Horror or um, Brass Skeleton, I believe it is. Bring this guy back. Um, pop one of the cards off of Bardish. This is then going to have protection effects as well if you can get a material to it. You've just got so many negates to play around with and disruptions that it's actually a very, very good kind of play and combo style. Now on to the extra deck. Now, like I said, we do have two um, Dingadisus. If the price is skyrocket, cut this down to one unless you've got two to hand. I would advise pre-ordering them as soon as you possibly can um, because some of the early box openings that we are seeing, they are getting one at a case, which is very, very disappointing. Uh, I currently got Triple Galatea. Now, with the Galateas, you can drop it down to two and bump up the Lingarisu if you want to, or you can bump up a Nightmare Mermaid, which we'll get to in a second. The one Orcus Trion, because we are going cheap and budget, and um, if you want to, this can be a Borrow Sword or a Borrow Load. The one Nightmare Mermaid, now obviously Nightmare Mermaid, you get an additional discard, and you bring out the level seven um, Corrupted Ibli, or Nightmare Ibli, and then that, of course, lets you extend your plays further forward, because it obviously works very, very well with your Orcus. Off the back of the Nightmare, you've also got the Phoenix and the Cerberus just as an additional usage. Uh, and then we've got the one Kagari, 
one Rusty Bardiche because of standard plays, one Top Local Trishbania just to deal with any back row heavy decks, uh, one Master Hero Dark Lord, and the one Time Thief Redoer because Redoer is actually very, very powerful still. Still being able to rip from the top of your opponent's deck um, if you've got the trap, bounce one, spell, draw one. Um, it can really, really cause your opponent quite a lot of issues as well. You don't have to play it. I just think it's one of the best ranked fours around right now um, in that sense. And of course, it is budget because it is a common. Uh, I will quickly go over Dingalisu so you guys can see why it is so important. So it is two level eight monsters. You can only special summon this card um, once per turn. You can also XYZ summon this card using an Orcus Link monster you control as material. If a card or cards you control would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you detach one material from this card instead. If this card is special summoned, you can activate one of these effects. Send one card your opponent controls to the graveyard. Attach one of your banished machine monsters to this card as material. So you would banish skeleton from the grave, bring this guy back into a zone that Bardish points to. You would pop a card off of Bardish's effect, and then you also have the ability to send a card. If you want this to have protection, you would attach skeleton that you've just banished to this guy as material, and then of course it has the additional protection effect should you need it. That is how good this card is, which is why everyone is trying to get their hands on it, uh, which is why it's a dick move if Konami has made this a one per case. Now we haven't seen the ratios in depth as of yet, um, so do not quote me on that. But as for now, um, as it stands, this is a budget build. This is very, very powerful, very, very competitive. Um, if you have the money to throw into it, by all means do so. This, <coughs> sorry guys, I can see, easily see this deck being one of the top tier contenders in this upcoming format. But for now, Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. And until next time, guys, as always, happy dawning. What's up, YouTube? Dad here from Zephyr War Games. Thanks for watching that video. If you liked it, please hit that big thumbs up button in the bottom corner as well. And don't forget to hit the big red subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. Make sure you click that notification bell as well so you know every time one of our new videos goes up. Throughout the whole year of 2019, we're going to have more deck profiles, duels, and of course, pack openings for you guys to watch and enjoy the entire year round. So stay tuned for more and as always guys, happy dueling.